Welcome to Where You Live on Shaw TV. Today our show is all about the Thunder Bay Police Service. I'm here with Chris Adams, you're the Director of Communications for the Thunder Bay and Technology for the Thunder Bay Police Service. Now the first thing we want to talk about is social media. It, is, it has changed everyone's lives it seems, including policing. Let's start with how it's changed the way the um, policing is, works. Well, it's uh, going back to 2011 for us. We actually launched our first Facebook page. Uh, we had a Twitter account set up at that point and a YouTube channel and a new website. So we did everything all at once. And for us, it was a really big step forward because it was a chance for us to start connecting with the community, that something in a way that we hadn't done before. So it was exciting, scary, and uh, <laughs> and kind of like new uh, new territory for us. So. Right, and in a positive way, I would think, because it's a way that you get to communicate with a lot more people. Yeah, it's really changed the way, uh, and we're not alone in this. A lot of police services now are, uh, have been for a number of years now using it as a way of going directly to the public. Um, you know, before we'd have to rely solely on putting out a media release. Mm -hmm. So you'd structure it as best you could and you'd hope it would get covered. But now the beauty of social media means uh, we as an organization can go directly to the public. We can actually develop an audience for our uh, content. And uh, that's what we found we've been able to grow over the last few years. Has it changed the way the community reports to the police? Well, they attempted to at first. Like when, we went, uh, when we went live back in uh, 2012, I guess it was, um, we developed it in 11, went live in 12, and realized, you know, people shouldn't be reporting directly to the police through social media because you lose all your privacy, you lose continuity over it. It has a lot of complications attached to it. And there's that risk of uh, people, you know, uh, putting uh, false news or false information on it. So we were very strict, and I think you'll find most police services are. We don't want people reporting to us directly through our social media channels. We still want them to call in 911 or uh, call the front desk if it's not urgent. So we, we really try to use social media more as a mechanism for getting our story out mm -hmm. and as well creating a bit of... of um, conversation, if you like, with the community about some of these important issues. Now, like with everything, there are some negatives to social media. I honestly cannot believe what some people post on Facebook, on Instagram. It amazes me that people post the stuff they do. Yeah, it shocked us too. You know, but I would have to say this, you know, we've got over, I think it's 15,000 uh, people that like us. So we get a lot of shares, we get a lot of comments, a lot of discussions, and really we haven't had to really kick a lot of people off the site, which really surprised us. It seems like a lot of people uh, in the community especially understand that it's, uh, it's a privilege to be on it mm -hmm. and make a comment, but it, it's got that risky element to it, and I think social media in general will always have that uh, aspect to it. You know, I, I don't think any of us respect people that are anonymous just throwing stuff out mm -hmm. there. What does that mean? But when they put their real name to it, they've given it some thought. There's a lot of good conversation that can be had then. I know something um, that has changed for me is whenever something would happen in the city, whether it be a car accident or anything like that, you would always look to the news. Well, now you find out much quicker because of social media. Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, once again, this is the strength of social media for uh, any organization now. And I think you have to approach it ethically as an author of it. Uh, you're essentially providing your own news content at that point. So you have to be, I think, respectful of uh, journalism in general, but understand, and I think journalism is understanding this as well, that um, they're not the only game in town that we have a, a chance to put that information out as quickly as possible. So yeah, we have a lot of people that follow us and especially during a crisis or something that's important, they wanna see pictures, a video uh, of something that's going on. They'll very often come to us first and look for that information. Now, when it comes to investigating crimes, what kind of challenges do you face with social media? Well, as you mentioned before, very wisely, you've got a lot of people out there that can post information and sometimes that information is not always true. So the risk is sometimes in an investigation that you can get flooded with too much uh, content that's not necessarily true content either. So we're kind of careful when we post stories on our uh, social media channels, on our Facebook page, we're very careful sometimes to say when we post it, if you have information that is going to help the investigation, don't put it here. 
don't put it there. I mean, you can violate someone's privacy by doing that, by starting to name suspects or who you think might be responsible for something. So it poses a lot of challenges. Once again, I think it's a challenge for journalism too, because journalists now have the ability to have to uh, weigh the information that they see on social media. Is it true? You hear a lot of talk about uh, fake news. Well, for investigators, that's an issue as well. Um, I can tell you, too, that during a critical incident, if we were involved in a standoff with, um, you know, a distraught person, say, in a house or uh, somebody holding someone hostage, it's very dangerous sometimes for that information to get out too quickly, uh, give away positions, say, of our tactical unit, uh, give away information of what's going on inside the house. We like to have control, slow things down, take our time, but sometimes social media, unfortunately, creates a, a bit of a crisis in the middle of a crisis. So it's uh, it's really changed policing. It's changed everybody's lives. And I would think like with everything, use a little common sense, you know, think yeah. about think about it before you post it. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. You know, unfortunately, common sense isn't always too common. But once again, I'd have to say the majority of people that are out there that are using it, using our, uh, our sites, are responsible people. When they're not, we do our best to monitor and take care of that. But yeah, you know, for, for God's sakes, if it, you're in the middle of a crisis, uh, you know, letting everyone know uh, immediately is not always necessarily the most important thing. Sometimes uh, there has to be some thought, and I wish people would think a little more. All right, well, Chris, thank you so much for sharing all that information about social media with us. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoy your visit today. Thank you. So there'll be more for, on where you live at the Thunder Bay Police Service.